Hi there. My name is Jun Xiao. Just uh, to confirm, uh, can anyone see my screen? Yes, I can see the screen. Awesome. Uh, and I can see the one. Hello, as a Hong Kong Polytechnic University, the paper I present today is entitled Federated Unlearning Well Class Discriminator Pruning. This paper is basically in the scope of privacy protection and specific to federated learning. Federated unlearning is a concept we propose in this paper about how we conduct machine unlearning with federated settings. Because the concept is close to federated learning and machine unlearning, we propose to clarify the topics. We briefly review the federated learning, correspondent studies on unlearning in the context of, of machine unlearning and uh, their limitations in federated settings. Federated learning have received extensive attention both in terms of market value and application. It has become a popular way to achieve collaborative training and data privacy at the same time. In a centralized training process, the federated server will initially send the global model to each participant. After training with local data, the participants are only required to share gradients for model updates. Then the server aggregates the gradients and transmits the updated model back to the client. Recent legislation, for example, GDPR, CCPA, and LGPD, as for this legislation, they require organizations to give the ability of selectively uh, forgetting from trained models in policy and technology. Machine learning is such a process, generally speaking. Uh, machine learning is the reverse direction of machine learning. The goal of machine learning is to make the model, it's like it, ha it has never seen those forgotten data samples during training. In this work, we study the problem of selectively forgetting class from trained CNN image classification models in federated learning setting. Let's imagine such a of case. For example, in the automotive domain, straight wheels collected from self-driving cars may contain facial information, raising seriously privacy concerns and user complaints. In those cases, it's desirable to service provider to completely honor that class. A general way to make the model class-wise forgotten is to retrain the model from scratch without using the data of target class. The advantage of this method is clear because it's the only one that can be proven to be convincing in terms of information forgetting, especially for deep learning models. However, the computational and time overhead associated with fully retraining models can be expensive. Approximate and learning method produce models that are approximation of the fully trained models. Most of them can be used in a centralized machine learning setting. They can also speed up the learning with lower communication overhead. Uh, however, the limitations are significant because they heavily rely on the global access to the training data. Current centralized and learning methods are not suited to handle the system challenges that of federated learning including lack of direct data access, communication cost, and non-ID data. Addressing these challenges is such as a key contribution of our solution. Imagine such a possibility. If we can quantify the class information learned by each channel without global access to the data, then we have a chance to forget special class by pruning the channel whose classic discrimination is the most. Assuming this data is feasible, the federated learning will have a novel implementation with that practical constraint can be well adapted. To study the pathway to the channel pruning based solution, we start by investigating the class discriminative of channel in CNN. The feature map of each channel has a feature that a particular error in one feature map is activated. For example, in the same convolutional layer, some channels always generate a feature map to highlight the head information, while the other channels always highlight the text information. Even though there is no labeled head of text, the class discriminative channels also learn to extract partial information to make better decisions, with, which is exactly like uh, human behaviors uh, when classifying an image. Head information will help the model to identify animals, and text information will help classify the class with the text. Such local representations on the internal layer uh, demonstrate uh, different channels that have varying contribution to different classes for uh, image classification, which remind us to rethink the importance of class discriminative channels on federated unlearning. Our unlearning method is composed of two components running respectively in the FF client and federated server. Given a cluster learning request, each online FF devices will follow the unlearning program from the federated server. 
Following the program, the local CN model will take the private images as input and generates a feature map score between each channel and the class. These feature map scores are then communicated to the federated server and aggregated into the global feature map scores. Server is responsible to evaluate the relevance score between the channels and classes and set up a pruner to conduct the pruning on the most discriminative channels of the target class. With notification of the pruning complete, each online FL device downloads the pruned model from the federated server and conducts normal federated training program to continue with fine tuning. In this process, the target class training data is not used. We use term frequency inverse document frequency to quantize the class discrimination of channels. TFIDF is a mirror that evaluates how relevant a word is to a document in a set of documents. It's used in many scenarios of document search and information travel, most importantly in automated text analysis. It's very useful for scoring words in machine learning algorithm for natural language processing. TFIDF defines a quantification of the relevance between a word and a document and the relevance accordingly increases to the number of times the word appears in the document, but is offset by the number of documents that contain this word. Therefore, the words that are common in every document rank low, even though they may appear many times since they mean few to the document particularly. Instead, if a word appears many times in a document while not appearing many times in others, this probably means that the word is very relevant. Determining how discriminative a channel is to a class can use TFIDF in a similar way. Especially, our unlearning method regards the output of a channel as a word and the feature map of a class as a document. So the TFIDF variant can evaluate the relevance score to the channels and the classes. Channels with high TFIDF scores have more class discrimination and need to be pruned. We use the idea of TFIDF because it's straightforward and efficient to predict the relationship between channels and classes, from which we can find the effect of class discriminative pruning on learning. TFIDF as a bridge of our core idea is easy to follow. Of course, we believe that more complex and effective bridges will be there to replace the role of TFIDF. It's available research direction for future work. In this paper, we use standard channel pruning technique as a type of structured model update. The advantage of channel level pruning is moving the channel directly, which can be well supported by the general purpose hardware and high efficiency libraries. In addition, standard pruning is much easier to deploy in current web application scenarios with the evolving hardware platforms. Studying the effects of different pruning techniques is also available research direction for our future work. We use a one-shot pruning to prune the channels whose score is beyond a predefined percentage. It prunes specific weights from models so the values are set to zero and we make sure they don't take part in the backwards propagation because some channels in the layer are removed. The convolution filters that uh, uh, generate these channels in the layer will be removed accordingly. In the case of multi-class removal, the pruning process can be executed multiple times removing one class each time. Finally, when the pruning process is complete, the federated server will notify each participant FL client to download the pruned model from it. After pruning the most discriminative channels of the target class, the accuracy should be compensated by training the pruned model. Our fine tuning process is the same as normal training procedure of federated learning. We apply to prune channels of multiple layers at once and retrain them until the target accuracy is restored. Although specially designed for FL, the class discriminative channel pruning method can definitely be applied in centralized learning. Since a representative future distribution between channels and classes can easily be obtained with global access to the data. However, the advantages of class discriminative pruning are not significant in centralized scenario. With full access to the raw data, the central server can accurately evaluate the individual contributions of each data point. Additionally, uh, data privacy protection and the communication overhead optimization is no longer required. This will lead to a uh, far greater uh, diversity of class learning design, allowing the uh, central server to obtain a better optimization to the target unlearned model in terms of accuracy of overhead. In our experiments, we evaluate the performance of a proposed unlearning method in the FL setting. We report experiments on CIPA-10 and CIPA-100 datasets with ResNet and VGG models. 
We choose this data sets and models because they are standard and general in image classification tasks. So proving that our method generates instead of only valid for specific image tasks, such as facial image classification. In our setting, there is only a portion of total clients are sampled as participants. And the participant clients have non-ID local training data, so the participant data are incomplete and biased. We assume that participant data have a distribution different from the overall training data distribution of this learning task. Especially, we assume the participant data are biased towards certain classes. The first baseline we use in the experiments are retraining the data without the sample to be unlearned from scratch. And the second baseline for getting the target class based on the facial learning method. This method uses the facial information of the participant data and inject optimal noise in order to achieve unlearning. As for care metrics, we mainly focus on the unlearning speed up ratio and information eraser, aiming at reduce the unlearning process time and the gap with retraining as much as possible. Uh, the speed up produced by our method compared to fully retraining is very significant. On CIFAR 10, they said we observed the speed ups beyond 800% for the rest of the model and beyond 7. 100% for the VTG model. On C500 uh, data set, the speed up are 900% and 800% respectively. On the one hand, as the uh, depth of network increases, the effect of acceleration will get better. On the other hand, as the total number of classes goes up, the effect of unlearning acceleration will also get better. Uh, this uh, results show that our method can be well adapted to the real large scale scenarios with large number of classes and the deep network. We compare the model accuracy on the remaining data set and the unlearned data set respectively for our method and for retraining. We serve as a manner to evaluate the quality of unlearning and how much information about the target class is still contained in the unlearned model. Our method has no loss of accuracy on the remaining data set. The accuracy of our method on unlearned data set is the same as for retraining, and they are both zero percent. This results prove that our method achieves the resemble effect of information eraser on the pre-trained models as the full retrain does without the expense of accuracy. Uh, compared to the baseline method using the feature information, our method performs significantly better because our method is insensitive to the distribution of training data. So uh, it can achieve accurate and learning even with biased to participate data. The performance in the case of multi-class removal is still advanced, with the speeds up comparable to the case of single-class removal. After pruning for the target class, the accuracy of the after prune model on the remaining data set gets lower, which also shows an ideal information eraser. This proved from the side that our method can indeed cut the channels most relative to the target class from the train model. In the fine-tuning process, less interference forward and backward propagation comes from the channels related to the target class, so it can effectively accelerate the recovery of accuracy on remaining data set. To conclude this paper, there are two things that we think of maybe take away. The first one thing is that class discrimination of channels is a key for class learning, especially under the federated settings. If IDF has structured pruning as a bridge to our core idea is to follow, however, the optional part. We believe that more complex and effective bridges would be there to replace the role of TFIDF is valuable research direction for future work. With the evolving hardware platforms, studying the effects of different pruning tactics is also a valuable research direction for our, our future work. This paper focuses on class-wise unlearning problem in FF setting. Well, the sample level unlearning problem is more challenging issues that remain to be studied in future work. The sample level unlearning task requires not only does a class need to be forgotten, but rather a particular subset of samples within a class need to be removed. While still maintaining output knowledge of that class, to achieve such a challenging goal, it requires a more elaborate design since the data point contribution to the model are difficult to evaluate without access to the raw data. And we are working on a solution to the problem in the near future. That's all the presentation. Thank you very much for your listening. All right, uh, it was an interesting talk. Uh, thank you. Any questions from the audience? All right, uh, I have a question. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jun Jiao, am I 
pronouncing correctly your name? You're right. All right. So anyway, uh, I, I want to start with your takeaway message, uh, class discrimination, uh, because that's an important step in your whole framework pipeline, I believe. Uh, in your evaluation, did you come across any uh, uh, any cases where you had more than you know one channels that were discriminative to a target or class? And what happens if you find more than one discriminative you know, class? Uh, a channel to a target or class? Yes, this is an uh, interesting question. And uh, uh, we, uh, in this paper, we, we mainly uh, have an initial step to uh, investigate the problem. Uh, the problem is we found uh, some channels in the CN uh, network that have a discrim uh, discriminative contribution to the, to the classification. So um, we uh, uh, we found this 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 uh, some layers have uh, a unique contribution to the uh, to the classification results and uh, um, so the uh, the interact uh, the de the detail the details of the uh, interactive uh, interactive active active influence between the channels is uh, more complex than. Uh, uh, that the discrimination we have given in this uh, uh, presentation. So the the practice uh, interactive influence is uh, more complex. So so uh, if you uh, if you want to uh, uh, study more in this direction, I I think this is uh, uh, this would be a valuable direction. And uh, basically, uh, but actually we um, we just. Uh, takes some initial step to investigate the problem. So, so we uh, possibly we will uh, we will study more in the direction in the future. Work. I thank you very much for your question. Well, thank you. Uh, I saw Andrew raise uh, his hand. Uh, I don't know if he still has a question or not. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I just posted in the chat. So my question is, um, what happens in this approach? if only a subset of participants participate in the, the unlearning process, if maybe some of them have gone offline, uh, what percentage of participants do you need to participate? Uh, yeah, our experiment, we, uh, the, the minus the percentage of the person, uh, the minimum number of the part, uh, participate is one. Uh, this means that uh, for any, for anyone, for anyone participating in the federated learning, uh, they can only upload their own evaluation on the, uh, the, the relevant score or discrimination score to the server and they can, uh, they can honor a specific class from the model, from the whole model. Right. So, the, so the minimum number of the, uh, is one, it's just one. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. 